Hello, hello, good morning, happy Saturday, everybody. Let me just run a quick audio check, make sure I'm good to go. Give me one sec. All right. Make sure we're good to go. Check my cameras real quick. All right, audio sounds good. We are good to go. All right. Happy Saturday. Happy 4th of July weekend. Okay. Um, of course, my favorite day of the week, Saturday. Okay. Saturday is always uh, the most productive, both business wise and, of course, family wise. So I definitely, definitely going to have a lot of uh, activities later on today. All right. But of course, the best way to start every Saturday morning. Okay, with some embroidery training, uh, embroidery knowledge, and education. And of course, everybody that's in the chant, right? Everybody that's in the chant, everybody brings their own personal knowledge and skills and experiences. So if you want to, uh, anytime today, if you want to drop some of your information or some of your experiences, all right, that way we can all learn from each other. All right, uh, I actually have a question for the day. Okay, so the question for today See if I could pull it up. All right. Question of the day. What is your most busy month of the year? Or what is your busiest month of the year? Okay. And I'll answer this one in a quick second. Okay. Uh, so what is the busiest month of the year for you, for your shop? Okay. Uh, just throughout the year. Okay. I know we all have different genres. We have we all have different types of customers and different types of project. So I'm pretty sure um, a lot of us uh, we some of us have similar some of have has different um, busy time of the year. All right, let me let me just start off and answer this question for us here at our shop. Okay, right now actually the summertime is our slowest time. So right now um, I would say uh, starting May. Probably from May, June, July is probably our slowest, okay, compared to what's about to come through, right? Um, so what I always what I always like to tell people is during your slow months, okay, just because you're having a slow month doesn't mean that everything shuts down, okay? Actually, I think I work harder during our slow months because that's the month that uh, we're actually sampling new items, sampling new designs, sampling new techniques. Uh, getting everything ready, doing um, doing more. Uh, I wouldn't say advertisement, but more prospecting. Okay, so talking to other companies and um, trying to bring in new business. Okay, because what happens is, okay, what happens is our busy season. All right, our busy season starts October, November. Okay, and then December. Okay, it's a little gradual right but november when it's uh black friday okay even weeks before black friday okay that's like our maximum right that's our maximum day of the year is black friday by then you don't really have time to be sampling and testing out new fabric new garments okay the time of testing when you're at your major peak okay you're you're more in production mode Okay, you're in production mode, all the heavy lifting. You did all that throughout the year. Okay, so I know uh, a lot of us, okay, I know a lot of us, uh, we're kind of in the same boat, right? Like uh, uh, our business, right? Business usually slows down a little bit in the summer. Okay, unless if, you were, uh, if your genre is kind of like sporting teams, athletic teams, stuff like that, you mu you, you're probably booming right now. Okay, you're probably booming, but for... A lot of us that our peak season is toward the colder season, right? When it's beanie season, hat season. Uh, no, I mean beanie season, uh, jacket, sweater season, okay? Um, don't take this downtime lightly, okay? You actually, you should be working harder, testing out and learning new skills. That way, when, you're, when big season comes, okay, you're not even thinking about all that stuff. You're just in production mode. Okay, you're like on autopilot, just pumping out work. 
All right. So for us, uh, our busiest month of the year, I would say November, but even before November, October. So October, November, busiest month. Okay. Uh, at that point, I'm really not testing out any new product or anything. All right. That was just a uh, side note question, right? Just to uh, just to kind of get an idea of uh, where everybody's at, kind of month wise. All right. Let me close this out. All right. Um, all right. Good morning, everybody. All right. Uh, looks like we are getting a packed house this morning. All right. Good morning, Donna, Lejean, Kingsbury, Beverly Jean, TMG, Custom Design, Sohan, Barb. Good morning, uh, Beverly Jean. Beverly Jean says around November. All right. November. I know November is a very popular one for uh, embroidery. Of course, you don't want to be buying your products right during that time during peak season because everybody is buying stuff at that same time. So I would suggest I like to buy all our stuff for the season. I like to buy it like August time frame. Right. Come August, I like to have everything in hand probably like two, three months before that big rush comes. All right. And then uh, Barb, I do embroidery, heat transfer and custom sewing. So stay busy around the year. Summer, summer may be slower, but it's nice to enjoy working on my. Yep, exactly. OK, so when you have that, that when when work kind of slows down a bit so you could more you could do personal projects. OK, because that's the way you get better is by uh, coming up with ideas uh, and experimenting and actually doing your own project and then seeing what works, what doesn't, what can be implemented business wise. What should just be kept as a hobby? All right. Uh, good morning. Sunrise Tactical from Washington State. All right. Good morning, Linda. Sadar, good morning. All right, right. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, all right. So we are good to go. So today we have a super busy morning. All right. So I'm going to get started right here. Let me set up our... Uh, Set up the computer right here. All right. Oh, there we go. Put me in that corner. All right. Uh, so today I want to talk about 3D Puff. Okay. Actually, let me go back to full screen real quick. All right. So today, okay, we are going to talk about my favorite projects, okay, in embroidery. The reason why I got into embroidery. All right, is because of 3D puff on hats. All right, I think that is the most uh, profit driven. Okay, very easy, very, uh, I won't say easy, but very, uh, it's very easy to sell. Okay, a nice looking product just stands out when you compare just a regular hat with an actual 3D puff hat. Okay, it's just, it's like day and night. Okay, and my inspiration really to even start uh, 3D puff hat embroidery. My big, my biggest inspiration was uh, all the major league baseball hats. Okay, all the major league baseball hats. Uh, they're all 3D puff. Okay, very simple. Okay, very simple design. You don't really have crazy details happening. All right. So, um, and then stitch count relatively small. All right. So for the amount of price that you could charge, all right, stitch count is low. Um, and as long as if we're following the rules, okay, as long as we're following the rules of 3D Puff, and sometimes rules can be broken, but you got to know, you got to know the rules in order to break them. All right. So, um, I think hats, one of the most profitable items. And actually I think 3D Puff is one of the more easier designs to digitize. Okay. Believe it or not. Okay. You would think that it would be one of the more complicated ones. But I think it's one of the more uh, simple ones because you really want your design to be as basic as possible. Okay, you remove a lot of the excessive details from the designs. Okay, so a lot of times if a customer brings you something outrageous and you want something uh, 3D puff, okay, the best thing to do is to advise them and tell them, hey, we can do it, but we would have to eliminate this, this, and that. Okay, so we're trying to make it as simple as possible. And really, if you look at all the Major League Baseball hats, okay, they're very simple, okay? They're very simple, very, um, the the sand stitches, okay? They're usually all sand stitches and very nice, clean, symmetrical type shapes, all right? So 
today, it's kind of like a continuation from what we talked about last week was cursive. Last week, we talked about cursive text. Okay, so this week, we're going to take that same concept and we're going to apply it but to 3D Puff. And if you missed last week's, okay, uh, I do have it on the playlist. Uh, I'll link it down below also here. All right, so you could refer to the small little details that we talked about last week. All right, so today I have the word that I want to uh, digitize. All right, is this one here, art? All right, let me pull it up. All right, so I got the word art, okay? Art, so as you can see, very nice cursive. Right, we got cursive letter. Uh, reason why I picked uh, this type of font, okay, because uh, really I think if you can take care of, if you can do a font like this, okay, you pretty much can do a lot of of the other more basic type fonts, okay. This is, I would say, this is uh, text wise, this would be one of the more difficult level ones, okay. But then you're gonna uh, you're gonna see how basic we're gonna make it, okay. Uh, so i would compare this font and this style of text with uh, some samples that i have here all right so these are just right so mlb type right so uh so you could see here right this is the type of uh cursive type font all right one thing that we want to look and focus on is connections all right so you see these connections here okay so let's say like this corner here okay anytime we see connection these are uh, areas of interest all right critical points that we're going to have to uh really think about when we're digitizing okay same thing here anytime you have threads connecting each other all right we gotta we have to stop what we're doing and kind of adjust and add some uh, extra extra steps into it. All right, but I like this one because it kind of it kind of looks similar to the font that we're using. All right, and then the Dodger D, of course, the very popular one. And same thing here, right? So we have uh, these points, these intersections, areas of concern, or um, areas of interest. Here. Okay, so anytime we have intersecting connecting thread, okay, we're going to have to make some adjustments. We're going to have to stop our path and make some quick adjustments. All right, but overall, as you can see, uh, very, very clean, right? Very clean, simple design. We're not really dealing with too much. We're not really dealing with too much uh, details. Okay, and then let's see the next one. All right, the, the Washington. These are some just some quick ones that I pulled up right now. All right, so same thing here. We have our connecting, our connectors here. Okay. And then we have this kind of connecting here at this corner. Okay, corners are always, are also areas of interest. All right, so we'll talk about that stuff there. All right, but as you can see, I like cursive type uh, fonts. Okay, now one thing when we're dealing with uh, with 3D Puff, one thing that you want to keep in mind, our, our sand stitches, you don't want very thin, thin sand stitches where your puff is going to kind of get lost. Okay, so uh, you want to have something um, pretty thick, okay, uh, but not too thick where it's more than about seven or nine millimeters. Okay, even though you could, you could go that wide. Okay, you kind of want to stay away with a complete design that's nine millimeters or longer. All right, so that's so that's that there. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let me bring up. Uh, hold on. Let me just uh, adjust my computer real quick. Um, all right, let me pull up the design. Art, the word art, okay. Oop. All 
Right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, we got the word here. X out of this right here. All right, so we have the word art, okay? Uh, I like these three words because it's actually like the initials of my daughters. So it's like A for Alexandria Romero. And then this T kind of looks like a J for my daughter, Jordan. All right, so it kind of works out for me here. All right, uh, so today we're going to uh, digitize our three letters for 3D Puff. Okay. Um, of course, I'm going to put them separate. So when I when I when I stitch them out, they'll be on their proper on their own file. Okay. So the letter A, the letter R, and the letter J, or T will be on its own file. All right. And then once we uh, digitize this. I'll go ahead and hoop it up. I'll actually uh, stitch out the letter R. Okay, of course, R for Romero. All right, I think it looks very nice, very elegant, this one. Okay, it looks very clean. And then this font is called, it's an Adobe. It's an Adobe font and it's called Corner Store JF. All right, so if you have Adobe, uh, you could find this. Um, that's the good thing about having uh, the, Adobe Cloud, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, and all that. It gives you all the fonts, and you could just pull up a bunch of cool fonts. Uh, so it's Corner Store JF. All right. All right. So first thing we want to do, we want to check the size of this. Okay. I'm really just looking at the height. All right. I'm looking at the height. Um, let's see. It should be ready to go. 2.12. All right. So two inches. Is what I'm looking for. I want a hat that's two inches in height. Okay. Then I could lock this down with K, dim this down, ready to go. All right. All right. Um, if you have a question or anything, uh, you could put a Q right in front of it. And if I don't get to your question right away, we are going to be stitching on a hat 3D puff. So while we're stitching, I could always answer questions. Always go back. All right. So we got more people in the class. All right. Good morning, Lisa. Uh, Marisa. Good morning, Jelaine. Good morning, T Town. All right. Uh, that's a, let's see, it is. Good morning, Toledo, Ohio. That's about all I do anymore is puff. Yup. I like puff because once you got it, you got it. Right. Uh, all right. Morning, Beta. I'm on the road coming from PA on my way home. All right, all right. All right, thank you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Safe travels for everybody that's traveling this weekend, this long weekend. All right, Jesse, good morning. All right, from Cyclone, West Virginia. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get busy. All right, let's start with the A. Let's let's just go over some basic rules here, okay? Uh, the first thing we want to do, okay, first thing we want to do, uh, we want to put a thread as a placement stitch, okay, just to show us where to place our foam, okay, where to place our foam. Uh, you could also, okay, you could you could draw a square so you could get the size of foam that you need, all right? So you can make like a square here. Okay, you could put a square, measure it, all right, and down here below it's telling us that we have a width of almost four inches, a height of about two inches. All right. So if you're cutting, if you're cutting, uh, if you're cutting foam, okay, if you're cutting your foam and you want to be very efficient, okay, you at least need this this amount of size. Now, don't be don't be trying to save too much foam where you're trying to buy where you're trying to place exactly the exact size of foam that you need, because sometimes you might come up short. All right, and then it's a headache to kind of fill in the gaps, all right? Uh, my wife, she does a lot of our production, okay? When we're doing uh, projects and she does a real good job in minimizing excessive waste, okay? She, she uh, like she, she knows how to measure and match the exact pieces of puff that we need for certain items, right? But for the most part, like for me, 
when I'm sizing up puff, I just put a little bigger than what's needed. All right, so we'll see that. But for those who are trying to save, okay, we at least, this letter's pretty pretty wide, okay, for it being two inches, okay, 3.8. But I think it looks real cool, right? This A looks pretty cool right here, okay? So we could delete that. All right, so first thing that I want to do, okay, is just put a placement, okay? It's just going to be a regular uh, running stitch, all right? Just to kind of, just to kind of show us where to place our foam, okay? And then I stop right here, okay? I just put a, a okay, you could edit this just so it could uh, kind of match your distance. All right. So this placement stitch, I like to just select the color of the hat, okay, or or the color of the the thread you're going to use. H. All right, and then notice I didn't go all, I didn't do the loop all the way around. Okay, you could if you want to, but I just want to know what's the maximum uh, distance to the left. What is the maximum list distance from the bottom? Okay, so here, this is our bottom part. Okay, so it kind of gives me a, an idea here. If you want to, you could go all the way down, but I already know, give it a little space there. So you want to know the maximum space to the right, okay, which is here, and maximum length from the top. All right, so, you, so when you do your uh, placement stitch, you got an idea of where to place your foam, okay? So what, right? Right when you place that foam, okay, we're ready to go. Okay, one thing you can do, okay, I'm gonna give different options of what you can do when you're working with Puff. Okay, there's not really no right or wrong answer. Okay, uh, the only time you know what's the right or wrong answer is when you do your sample. And if it doesn't come out correct, then right, you gotta make adjustments. All right, uh, so here, okay, we talked about in the beginning areas where our thread is going to be intersecting okay so our area of interest are these areas that are connecting okay something that you can do all right something that you can do is your first stitches you could construct your bridge all right so you can make walking stitches so those areas of intersection okay you could combine them and build a bridge and building a bridge just brings those intersect intersections together. Okay. So you could build that. Okay. Very useful. And I would say uh, the majority of digitizers do use that. So this is how that first stitch would come. It would just walk its way, kind of connect these intersections together, okay? But I'm going to do something different, all right? I'm gonna do something different here just to give you another option. And, uh, and, uh, and it's an option that I usually use right here, okay? What I like to do, all right? Well, I'll just go ahead and start uh, digitizing this first leg right here of the A. All right, so of course we wanna know our uh, sequence, okay? I want this part. Okay, hold on. Make sure I'm good. Let me just make sure I'm good. Give me one sec. All right. Let me just reset my YouTube right here. All right. I don't know, my screen froze. Hold on. 
on my screen froze. All right, give me one second. All right, yep. All right, hold on. Let me adjust. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. All right. All right. I think I got to manually connect it here. I'm just gonna connect it on my settings. All right, it's the software. All right, let me just reset this software real quick. Close. All right, hold on. We got some good mornings here. Good morning, Esmont from Louisiana. Good morning, everyone from Rhode Island, Armando. All right, let me just restart this real quick. All right. Just when I was about to go in. I think this happened back in uh, week one where the software froze. All right, let's give it a sec. Let me see. Takes a second to load up right here. Yeah, I'm good. Wait. All right, bam, back in action. All right, lucky we're just starting. All right. All right, let's bring it back in. Bam, bam. Let's do all that quick stuff. Bring it back in. All right, we did that walking stitch up here, placement stitch to know where our, our uh, text went. I mean, where our phone goes. All right, we're good. We're back. We're back on track. All right. If it freezes again, just give me a heads up. But I think we should be good. All right. Now, okay. Now, now we're gonna go ahead. Um, okay. Now this is this is the this is what I like about cursive fonts. Okay. Very separate. Very different than just your regular type block fonts. Okay. We've talked about block fonts before, where we gotta make our capping stitch for foam. OK, uh, for these cursive, notice that we have a these the ends 
has like a little pinch, okay? It's like a taper. We have a tapering here, all right? Because it goes from big, all right? Goes very wide. And then here we taper down, okay? So it's like a pinch, okay? We're pinching, okay? We're pinching our text. So we don't have to cap, okay? We don't have to cap our um, endpoints, okay? So we have an endpoint here, okay? So just picture it like you uh, writing it with a pencil, right? You're starting here at the bottom of the A, you're going around, okay? And then you finish here, okay? And it's the same thing, okay? We have a pinch right here, all right? So that's very important because what we can do instead of putting a uh, a um, a cap here, okay? We can just make our first stitch, okay? We're gonna make our first stitch. Turn this two millimeters, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna keep it about 0.4, okay? 0.4 millimeters. Okay, this is small enough to cut our foam. Okay, so since it's small enough, we can just keep it there. All right, and then now we want to, you want to anticipate how you want the, your stitch angles to look. Okay, and something that I want to show you. Okay, a lot of times I kind of draw out the way I want the, the, the sand stitches to look. Okay, here I'm not going to use our bridging, what I showed you in the beginning, where I kind of made the lines to intersect our uh, connections. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a double, a double layer here. Okay, so notice I, I could finish here, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap back out here and put a double layer. Okay, so when you push enter, okay, make this dark so you can see it. Okay, so what I did here, okay, I put a double layer of thread on top of each other. All right, so if we if we look at it. H, okay, you can see that extra layer is right here, okay, and that's what that's going to do. I could, I could, I what that helps me do, okay, that takes away the need to put the bridge, all right, and I like it because it lets me keep these angles exactly like how I want them to come in, all right. So let me know if that makes sense, okay? Here, you just wanna make sure that when you trace, okay, not always, you don't always trace it perfect, all right? So if you wanna go back and kinda quickly uh, fix it up, okay? This corner here, make it round. I like to pull it out a little bit than what's necessary because I know these tight corners or these wide corners, they're gonna tend to pull in, all right? And then here, it's kinda following, you want it to follow a nice, clean smooth uh, line right here okay so everything looks clean all right uh one thing that that you want to do okay we can do this at the very end but you want to remove all your um your auto split okay you definitely want to have that off okay your underlays okay you want to remove all underlay okay you do not need underlay here at the very minimum you could keep a center run okay usually i like to have a center run because that'll just help me keep the foam uh nice and down okay nice and flat okay i'll place a nice foam and i like to use the 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 heavyweight type foam okay which is specifically made for uh for embroidery okay for hats all right so that keeps everything nice and tight here okay if you're using some of the very soft uh craft foam which is not really made for embroidery 
then I would avoid putting any type of underlay because you're gonna smash, you're gonna smash your foam. Okay. And I would and I would avoid using this technique here where I'm doubling up on the intersections. All right. So we got this part, we got this portion here. You just want to make sure that your angles are good to go right here. Okay. Um, and just I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I used. Okay. Let me pull up my camera right here. I'm gonna show you what I used before I start digitizing. Okay. I was supposed to um, scan this and put it up, but I'm gonna scan it later and I'll put it up on our uh, on the Romero Threads Facebook. So you could kind of, you could kind of have an idea of how I plan and how I go about setting up. Okay. But I just wanna let me see if it's hold on. All right. So I print out what I do. I print out a sheet. I drop down the opacity of the text and I kind of picture, okay. I'm kind of brainstorming how I want my angles to look. I want, I'm brainstorming what's going to go first, what's going to go second, okay. Where am I doing run stitches, okay. So all the analyzing, I like to do it by hand. That way, when I come down to the, to the software, I'm kind of like on autopilot, all right. So I'm kind of seeing my bridges and any connectors, all right. So what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to scan that. I'm going to add more information that I could put. I'll scan it, and then I'll put it on the Romero Threads Facebook page. All right. So a lot of times, these angles, I already have an idea of how I want it to look. Okay. All right. So from here, okay, you, you, you kind of want to anticipate. I'm going to put this leg first. Then I'm going to go up here. Do the right side of the A, okay, of this long part here, and then go around, do the, the second part of the top part. And then this last part is this full swoosh that's going to go through here, okay? That's going to be the final part here, okay? And then here, if you see like this is too much going in, all right, we could uh, T, H, you can always fix this portion right here bring this down a bit if it's too much all right so that's that's cool right there you want to have some coverage because this intersecting you want to avoid any gaps okay you want to avoid gaps all right so h it's telling me to stop right here but i want to stop here at this corner here okay then i walk my way up here Okay, so I'm kind of like um, anticipating my whole my whole uh, sequence. All right, and then I'm gonna do that double that double up here again. Okay, all right, and then when we show when I show the replay, you'll kind of get an idea of what I did. So I start on top, I go down, then I bring it back up. Um, but I do, yeah, damn. All right, and then here at this corner, okay, I want to do a miter on this corner, and I'll talk about mitering your corners, all right? Um, it's just a miter is when two, uh, two joints come together. All right, that should be good right there. All right, then of course we're going to fix this up right here. H, you just want to make sure these lines right here. Okay, when we're circles are like uh, rounded corners, and these are sharp corners here. Okay, bam, I wanted to connect up here. Bring this down a bit, okay. And then what's gonna happen here, connect my other piece. All right, I want it to run this straight.
right, run it. Kind of anticipating the angles by the time it comes here, because my goal is for this angle to come straight in. Okay, straight. So the way I want it to look. And here I'll do that double. T. All right. So this is the mitering. Okay. I just want it to look as clean as possible when it comes up here. And then this bottom part to be right below that. Okay. So once I got that, H, just make sure everything's looking nice and curved. Put a little bit more curve here. Okay. So as you can see, these are curves. And then once it hits this uh, square, it's going to do a, a pivot. Okay, but I want it to pivot down here and put a little curve here, like a little minor one. All right, everything up here looking good. This one's going to be a curve. Bring it up a bit. All right, and then as long as everything is traced clean, okay. All right. Bam, look at that. So uh, here, you can kind of anticipate the angles, okay? Because here, you want your angles to look as natural as possible. Okay, so here, I want to bring this back a bit. What you don't want is any angles to look too sharp out of nowhere, okay? You want everything to look as natural. Especially for puff, like the angles of your stitches really stand out when you when you when you do that. All right. Good morning. We got some. Uh, say good morning, crafty Puerto Rican. Uh, unbiased. Good morning, and Janet. Good morning from New York. All right. All right. So we got this part, and now, now we get to this last swoosh. All right. So this last leg that's gonna come in. It's going to close everything all the way through. All right. So we're going to walk. Okay. We're going to walk from here to here. Okay. I got to change this color. Let me just um, H. We start here and we end here. Okay. And we want to end. We want to start right here. Yep. Okay, then we do the same thing here. Mm. All right, so just a reminder, we are working on 3D Puff here. Okay, 3D Puff, I think 3D Puff, uh, even though it's, it's labeled as a more advanced type of projects, okay, I think, I think digitizing wise, it's one of the more easier ones to digitize because as you can see, the sand stitches, we're working with thicker sand stitches, less details, okay? We're not really working, worrying about too much about small little minor details, okay? If somebody comes with a request for 3D puff and, they're, and the text is too small, right um it's i easily say we cannot do that okay or we can but we're gonna have to eliminate some some of the details of your project okay so here we're just going all the way and then here is where we're going to taper in okay so we want to we could come up to this corner here okay you want to find that 40. Bam, all right, so it's looking clean. Okay, what you want, what we want to do is kind of analyze these uh, angle lines. Okay, these angle lines. That's why that's why I like that's why I like to draw the angle lines on by by hand so I could visualize how I want these angles. 
Okay. Um, really, I want these angles to kind of match the way that the A is kind of going. Okay. The angle of the A. And when I sample out, that's what I'm looking. That's really what I'm looking at is how do the angles of the of the thread look? Okay. All right. Bam. So that is our letter A. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. All right. Let's go ahead, let's replay this. And then one thing that I like to look at, of course, I like to look at how many cuts do we have. So four trends right now, all right, very unnecessary. Okay, so that means, okay. Uh, one thing about Puff, uh, I want to have as much control as possible. Okay. Um, that's just because uh, I, I try to stay away from the, the, what do you call it? Hold on, let me pull this up. Try to stay away from apply closest joint. Okay, the apply closest joint. Just because sometimes apply closest joint is going to add extra extra running stitches. Okay, I want to control as much as possible. So H, okay, H. Um. We can start here. Actually, my first my first stitch that I want to do, I want to start from up here and walk my way to here. Okay, and I'll tell you why. I want to start from up here. Okay, go down and connect H. Put this as the first start, and then I want to end there. Okay, um, D. let me just find out where these cuts are at. All right, so of course the first cut was of the placement. Bam, bam, here, okay. And then, um, so I wanna remove this triangle here, H. So I need to put a start here. Bam, bam, okay, that removed one cut. And I got a cut here, gotta remove this cut. Every time you see a triangle, that's a cut. So I know this is cutting, starting on this part. So I want H. I'm going to end right here. Remove those. Okay. Then I go back here. Bam. All right. And I have two trims, all right? So first one, the green one for the placement, and then the blue one. So that's two cuts, all right? Exactly like how I want it. Bam. All right. Good to go. All right. And then one thing that I like to do, too. Okay, uh, if you want to just select, let's say I, I just want to make uh, changes to my sand stitches, you could go here, edit, okay, uh, depending what your uh, software you have, but a lot of softwares have this, where you could select by stitch type, so you could select all your sand stitches, okay, now all my sand stitches are selected, saves you like half a second than having to find each sand stitch. Um, You could put a uh, pull comp, okay. Pull comp here, okay. Of course, the, the factory setting 0.17. All right, for script, okay, because what happens is for script, script likes to pull itself in. All right, I like to give it a 0.3. Just give it an extra thickness, okay. 0.3. All right, it just gives it that extra umph. All right. And then anytime you do a change like this, you always look at the trims. It added an extra trim, so got to see where it gave me that trim again. Okay. Um, all right, so right here, remove this trim, H. Okay. It just wanted to be closer to the edge a bit on this first running stitch. All right. All right, let's replay this real quick. R. Okay, it's going to go. It's going to do this uh, placement stitch. 
to let me know where to place the where to place my uh, where to place my phone. Okay, and then here, let's rewind a bit. Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, that was a little fast. Hold on. This beginning part, I always like to see what happened. Okay, so I start from the top, came in here. Now it's going to do that uh, center run underlay. And now it's going to start from this part here. It's going to taper into our actual thread, into our actual letter here. All right now we could speed it up. I like going that first part very slow. That's the main part that from here on out. Okay, and then here. Let's do this in super slow motion. Okay, this is where I'm going to put that double double sand stitch. So it does the regular sand stitch. It's going to throw a line back out, and now it's going to do a, a double one. That's just so our area, our area, our connecting area, okay, it's not going to split open. So here's going to do that double. Okay, so it's going to. It's going to make the first sand stitch and now it's going to do the same thing again and just go all the way out that just prevents our uh our stitches from opening up okay our phone just gives it an extra strength okay so usually what you can do is put a bridge there okay but i sometimes like doing it like this because it just keeps my angles nice and clean all right, and then here it's going to miter its way into this corner. All right, it's going to miter its way into this corner. It's going to tuck itself in this corner. And then the top part of it, all right, now it's going to come back out. It's going to run a running stitch here. Okay, so we can speed this up a bit. And then it's going to start going bam outside okay we could bring this this bottom part we could bring it in a bit okay. all right and it's the same thing okay same thing it's going to come in it's going to do that double since we have a intersection there okay walk its way now it's going to do a uh underlay uh, it's going to do an underlay here all right i like this one just because now it holds that foam nice and firm all right, and then let's speed this one up because it's just going to go all the way around. All right, bam, through. Okay, so that one's good there. Okay, let's do this R. Okay, as you can see, this R has a lot of inter interesting connectors. Okay, ours is always good because we have like a three way connector here. Okay, we have this bottom, we have the bottom leg of the R. Okay, we have this rounded part. Of the R, and then we have the main leg, okay, of the R. Okay, so we got a lot of moving pieces here. Uh, some things to keep in mind, right? Some things that we want to keep in mind. Uh, we want to make sure we keep our angles nice and clean, our stitch angles nice and clean, and we want to prevent any gaps from happening. All right, so let's see how we go about doing this part. Okay, here. Okay, I'm going to do a quick uh, placement stitch to let us know where to place our stitch. Okay, so I start from the bottom of our design. All right. I could show you real quick how to do this one. So a lot of times you could just do a quick choppy design like this. All right, select it, edit. Put a circle here around this. Bam, bam. That's good, good, good. All right. Bam, bam. All right. Looking good. All right, uh, I want to thank Sadar. All right, good looking out. Send a uh, cash app. I right, appreciate that, Sadar. Good looking out. All right. Um, remember, if you have any questions, all right, I know sometimes I move kind of quick on some things that 
I think is just general information, but I know a lot of this stuff. Okay. Um, there, uh, I know a lot of this stuff that uh, could be, can bring up questions. All right. Why I'm doing certain stuff. Okay. And of course there is, no, there's never a, a, the one and only way to do something. Okay. There's sometimes uh, situations where I would do things differently. Okay. But for the most part, this is kind of like the mentality that I have when I'm digitizing. Okay. Uh, so here, okay. This one here is our placement stitch. This is just to tell us where to place the foam. Okay. Gives us, tells me my minimum. Okay. What I want to show, I don't need to have a perfect outline of my artwork. It shows me my minimum, my bottom. Shows me kind of like my right hand side. I could actually bring this, make this rounded a bit, bring this out a bit. Okay. I don't want to get too close. Okay. Where it's going to kind of hide out. And when I do my placement stitch, a lot of times I like to, um, I like to match the color of my hat. Okay. Or the color of my garment for the placement stitch. That way, if it kind of tends to stick out, it's not very visible. All right. Or for the most part, let me rewind that a bit. Okay. For the most part, my placement stitch, I like to make it the same color as the, the thread color I'm going to use on top. All right. Because this is all going to get covered up with the foam and your thread. Okay. And that way you could kind of get a good view of what's happening. Okay, you could bring it all the way up here, okay, but I kind of, it's an estimate, okay, this placement stitch is an estimate to kind of tell me where to place my, my, uh, my phone, okay, so what I want to do, I want to start with this part, okay, this part of the leg, then I'm going to do the rounded part, then I'm going to do this tail up here, and then come back, and then do this final R right here, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we got a question right here. All right. Barb, you got a good question right here. All right. Because that's something that I forgot on the other one. All right. What is the sense? What is the density? How close is the sense? What is how close? All right. All right. So I did not take care of that here. Okay. So again, here. We're going to select by stitch type, okay? So let me set the density, okay? Of course, the most important thing is what I forgot here, okay? So uh, we come here on the fields, okay? Your density, okay, your density foam, 0.18, okay, 0.18. Before it was 0 0.36. 0 0.36 is like your most common, like polo shirts, normal type thread, but since we're working with foam, okay, we're, since we're working for foam, our density is the distance between this needle and this needle coming in here, okay, when it comes in here, when it comes in here, okay, so before I changed it, okay, this is 0.18, this is what we use with foam, and let me undo what I just did, Okay, this is 0.36. So notice the distance. Okay, we need to bring that closer. Okay, we need to bring that density closer in order for our foam to actually get cut. All right, so we can pull it off nice and easy. So select by stitch type, satin. Just put a 0.18. So notice how close my stitches are going to get. Okay, bam, they got real close, right? They got. So like double, okay, double the closeness. All right, all right. Thank you, Barb, for that for that question. Okay. So that um, so here, if if we were to make this a uh, a hat, this A, you can see here it's about thirty seven hundred stitches. Okay, thirty seven hundred. Okay. So relatively small amount of um, stitches, all right? That's why I like to do puff foam hats, okay? Especially for organizations, because relatively, you're not dealing with a lot of stitches, all right? 
All right. Um, then let me see this. Let me see if I understand this question. Uh, Sherry, question on an existing design. Can I add double stitching at the intersection? Do I create? Okay. Okay. Good. Good question right here. Good question. So if you have a if you have a design right that's already that's already created and made, okay, you could add you could add another piece. So if you want to do a double layer, you could add a double piece, and then if you do have a cut, you could um, you can put walking stitches to prevent cuts. Okay, so you could you to answer your question. You could add, you could add uh, changes. Okay, you can't change. So you can't change an individual object. Okay, because if you have the, if you don't have the the actual working file, you can't change the actual object. So let's say here, I wouldn't want to um, adjust this, but I would add. Let's say you're going to add a. Um, an extra box, right? You could add your own extra box and then keep in mind where your cuts at and adjust your cuts. So you so you could remove your cuts, all right? So you have control if you want to cut it or not, okay? All right, good question. Good question. It's kind of hard to uh I'll see if I could implement it in what I'm doing here for that question. All right, all right. Let's go ahead. So I made this one here. Okay, same thing. You could put um, very common. Okay, very common is to go ahead and um, put bridge, right? Especially here. Okay, put bridge. Okay, and bring it back down. Okay, very common to do that. All right. In my situation. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to double it up when I'm here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a walking stitch from up here, from this corner. And we can start here. All right. Uh, so point four. Okay. So same thing. This is our uh, taper taper area. All right, you want to keep in mind the angles that you're going with, and this tool that I'm using, the column, the column tool. Pretty much every um, every digitizing software has this one. Okay, so really, I'm not using any any fancy uh, tools. Okay. Not using really any fancy tools. I'm using the most basic, basic tool right here. Okay. And here, I'll just put that double up here. So as you can see, I doubled up here. Okay, this is double. What I what I am going to do, okay. This has worked for me. For a good time. All right. Uh, here, I'm going. I am going to do a bridge here. Hold on. All right. So let's put it here. Bam. All right. This is gonna kind of connect this this top uh, this part this left side of the R with the circle part of the R. Okay. So go here here and now I digitize this piece. All right. So that's like three pieces that I just did right there. Okay. And that just keeps that intersection nice and close together. Okay. 
All right, cool. Then we're going to walk our way. Um, we'll walk our way. Oops. Walk our way up here. Here, I'll put a, uh, a bridge just to kind of switch it up a bit. All right, and then here we have a uh, we have an angle here. On this one, I won't do a double. I'll just do a traditional. This is the the way that you would normally see it. Okay, so we want to kind of match that angle coming in. All right, actually, let me go in reverse. All right, let's start from this side. All right, I'll get to uh, to the questions right now in a bit. Let me... All right. Uh... Bam, bam, bam. Uh, what I do want to do, okay, I think it'll be a cool project for me to do. I want to go ahead and uh, do this whole this whole uh, font, okay, all the letters from A through Z. I want to digitize the whole alphabet of this font and just record me doing the whole thing, okay, and just put it put it up as a video. So I might do that this week, okay. Um, I think it's a very cool font. I like it. Bam, bam, H. And then, of course, you could always come back here and make it look nice and clean. And you just want that nice natural swoosh. All right, right. Looking good. All right. And then we'll make this last one up here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do it one way and then I'll show you a alternate way to do this also, okay. I'm all about uh, learning how to do things alternate way because sometimes you do something and, there, and, and something happens, like something doesn't come out right. So sometimes you gotta do certain tweaks, okay, because there is no right way to do something, okay? Sometimes something doesn't work and you gotta go with the alternative way. Okay, so. So a lot of times, I know uh, usually when you learn 3D Puff, you learn the traditional way, but no, nobody talks about like uh, the alternative ways of doing stuff, so. Sometimes the traditional way to do stuff doesn't work and you have to kind of go to plan B, all right, so. That's one thing about embroidery is that nothing is ever set in stone. Like whatever you think is correct, okay, there'll be a certain project that kind of, the rules have to be changed a bit. All right, so this is just the normal way to do it. Bam. Okay, so what you want to do is you kind of want to get an idea that your angles look clean. So here we're going a little thin. Okay, you might want to H, bring this out a bit. Okay. All right. Bam, bam. H. Okay, and then of course you're always looking out for. Um, your cuts, okay, H is here, we end, we're gonna end here. That means here, we wanna start here, H. So bring this up to here. Uh, H, we need the green up here. 
right? That removes that triangle right there. And then here, we need a walking stitch. I'm just looking for these triangles because we got to remove these triangles. Uh, oh, actually, I do got a walking stitch there. So H and here, okay, that removed that triangle. All right, cool. Color change, three. All right, exactly. All right. So well, we got this H. We want to end at this corner. And we want to H start here where we end. Remove that corner. And then H. And here H. We want to start where we're getting cut. All right. All right, we want to start H, we want to start right here. All right, so I'm just removing all my cuts, starting, stopping. Okay, so start, stop. All right, that's it. Color trims five, one, two. All right. All right, what I do want to do, I want to go ahead and stitch out uh, this letter R, okay? Uh, let me see if I got any questions real quick. Um, so here, once again, what I'm going to do on the settings, okay? So I want to select all my uh, sand stitches. Let's let's make this a different color, okay? Uh, go ahead, select your sand stitches. All right, we're going to put this 0.18 of density. Okay, uh, you always want to have auto split off. And then here, okay, um, your short stitches, okay? I keep short stitches on. I know there's some people that keep it off, but what short stitches does, okay? Notice here, okay? Notice here that we have stitches here that kind of jump in inside these are what's called short stitches all right instead of this stitch being up here real close to this okay uh this design short stitches kind of saves itself by putting this stitch here that way these stitches aren't so close to each other where you can get a uh, needle break okay sometimes if you have neat uh needle penetrations that are too close a high potential of getting needle breaks Okay, so by you shortening up your stitches, okay, you avoid that. Also, okay, if you do get foam that sticks out here, okay, usually it's so minimum that a heat gun should be able to kind of clean that up. Okay, of course, if you're getting excessiveness of that, it, it might be just a digitizing thing that you could probably clean up. Okay, but for the most part, this is what anytime you hear about sh uh, shortening up your stitches. Okay, anytime you get a tight turn, okay, you want your stitches to kind of adjust itself to prevent any needle breaks, okay? And that really only happens at these critical points of curves, okay? So let's say like, um, that wasn't really, so we don't really have too many, okay? There really isn't, we're right here, right? Because you know this tight, where it's turn, we're turning in tight, okay? So this here, okay, see these, li these little dots is where our needle is coming in, okay. All right. Um, and then, let's see. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's, let's play this one. Let's select what we want to select, and then let's put a replay, and then do a slow motion of what's happening.
All right, so here it's gonna, I'm going to run a uh, placement stitch just to let me know where to place my stitch. All right. Um, then we push play, and then it does the actual stitch here. It's going to do the first part. Okay, so that, that center run, I like using that center run because it's going to hold that foam in place. And I don't really like placing a long um, tack down stitch too much on this letter R, okay? Because I just want it kind of to kind of um, move freely, the, the foam here. I don't want it to be locked in. It does this part. It's gonna speed it up a bit. It's gonna do that. It's gonna run over here. Part. It's gonna run down there and bam. All right, cool, cool. All right, so that looks good to go. Okay, so I want to go ahead. Where are we? At? All right, cool. We're, we're. I think we're good with time. Okay, I think we're good with time. Hide others. Hide. All right. So while I'm setting up. Let's go bigger here. All right. Let's see if we got any questions. I know we have some questions right here. All right. Uh, one thing that I think, um, so of course, we're all here learning, right? Uh, one thing, I think the most important part of learning, okay, because it's one thing of learning the, the theory portion of embroidery. So a lot of times, right, um, we'll learn something, but we'll just learn the theory. But I think the actual stitch out, is really the most important thing to really learn, okay? That's where you really learn. So I always challenge everybody to do your own personal uh, pet projects, okay, personal projects, um, or you can even follow along. I'm gonna place the, the file here uh, as a free download, okay? So later on today, you could grab the JPEG, you could, you could kind of uh, stitch it out or digitize it yourself, stitch it out and see how it comes out. And then I'll, I'll put the, the working files that I just did on the download too. So you could kind of compare yours with mine, see what you would change, see what you would keep, all right? But I think the most important part of the learning process is the actual sew out, seeing seeing it sew out for yourself, right? That's why I like to, uh, after we talk about digitizing, I like to actually stitch it out so everything that we said actually makes sense, okay? so. I think it's important. Uh, so the way I like to do the class, I always like to digitize kind of like the first hour. And then the second hour we go, we stitch it out. We go over questions. Um, we talk about, you know, different types of scenarios that we could do. All right. All right. Let's take care of some questions right here. Um, all right. Good morning, Salty Gravy. All right. Late, but here, yeah. And you already know we got this on the replay, all right? So it's always good to come back, right? Um, and I know we start early for all my West Coast people, right? So it's always good to be on the replay. And then uh, unbiased, which hat is best used when doing puff? Can this be done on a... Yeah, you could do it on any hat, okay? Um, trucker hat, yeah. Um, And then um, Marisa, I'd like to does three. Uh, my my the person that I uh, I use, especially when I'm like swamp with work and I gotta send it out. Vitor digitizing. Vitor is like for me, he's the best of the best. Okay, I tried so many other digitizers. All right, and quick, quick, all right, quick. I already know how he works. Uh, he works with the software that I use. So any kind of little tweaks that I gotta do, I right, but. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll I'll post them also on the description. I'll put them down on the links so you can work with him. Um, yeah, yeah. And then unbiased, you're going for it. You want? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Vitor. I'll put them right now in the comment. All right. 
and then um bar put uh yep hold on vc from aussie australia all right good to have you bam bam bam, bam. and then uh bar bro uh just our mentor part of the burn yeah yeah digitizer uh real good he he does a lot of like advanced type stuff right um yep good skills there too um all right Bye, 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 bye. All right, all right. A lot of hellos. What's up? Bye, bye. And then salty gravy. Hands on is always the best way to learn. All right. So, yeah, good thing is telling you. Okay. I'm telling you. Theory, theory. You could do theory all day. Okay. You could do theory based all day. Somebody just giving you information. All right. But you have to actually see it so well. All right. So, all right. Hold on, let me see if I could pull up. Give me one second just to pull something up. I'm gonna pull up this link. All right. I always say I'm gonna put I'm gonna pull it up and I never pull it up. All right, I'll post up his website, Vitor. Yeah, if you need one, best of the best. All right. All right. Let me go ahead. Let me start setting it up. Uh, let me set up the GoPro. Okay. Uh, one thing about 3D Puff hats, it's very, uh, I like it because equipment wise, okay, or even material wise, uh, of course, you need your hat, your garment, right? Uh, I got it right here. all you need right that's all you need hat puff and your um and your tear away okay your tear away that's it right you're not okay the one thing you do okay you got you do gotta do your homework on hats okay this is one of my favorite hats the 110 okay flex fit 110 uh cool thing about it right it's adjustable okay this is to me is best of the best type hat okay but let's go ahead. Let me set up this GoPro. Okay. Um, let's get with the hooping. All right. And then if you have any questions on the digitizing, I know I kind of went through it quick and there is a lot of small details that go with it. But for the most part, I covered a lot of it for the most part. Bam. All right, we're good to go. All right. What up from Germany? Manuela. All right, from Germany. All right. It looks like we have the whole world, right? On deck. All right, all right, cool. Let me turn on some lights right here. All right, looking good right here. All right, and actually, okay, earlier today, even before we do the hats, I did stitch out the puff, okay. It's still on the foam, all right, so I wanted to take out the foam altogether, but A-R-T, let me know how it looks. Hold on, let me throw more light here. I really, really, really like this font. Okay, really, really like it.
right, let's take a look at it. I haven't even touched it. I haven't even hit it with the heat gun yet. Okay, this is straight off the machine. So it still has the foam. Okay, so of course, the one thing that I'm always looking at is the stitch angles. Okay, and then one of the best, one of the most funnest part of doing um, puff is tearing off the foam. Okay. So, ideally, when you're working with foam, you want to um, you want to match the foam color as your thread uh, when possible. Okay, but what I like to do sometimes is I like to use the opposite color just to see if there's anything I gotta fix. Okay, because you can find little small tweaks and details that you miss if you use a color that doesn't match. Okay. But here, yeah, I use the black one. Black kind. Uh, this red kind of goes with um, the black. All right, I'll take out the little small minor one. But all right. So let's see. So this here on flat. Okay, on flat, very straightforward, okay? So if you're doing backpacks and and um, bags for 3D Puff, okay? It's pretty straightforward, okay? But what happens is uh, just because it's good on flat, you still got to check if it's good on hats, okay? Because sometimes something might work perfect for flats, but it doesn't look good on a hat. So you always have to test and sample out on your hands. All right. All right. So, pretty big font. Okay, very big. Two inches wide. And in total, this one would be uh, about nine inches wide. So, it's pretty big. Pretty big font. Okay. So, anytime you're doing cursive writing, okay, anytime you're doing cursive writing, you really want to. You want to avoid the very small type text. Okay, so each one is about two inches and about three inches wide, or 2.5 inches wide each. All right, so let me show you once again before we do the set. This was the A that we did, the R. And then, okay, because sometimes you might have a piece of foam hanging out, okay. I really don't have it right here, okay. But what you wanna what you wanna use is your heat gun, okay. So I get I I have this most basic heat gun, and of course you could just heat it up right here, All right? But let's go ahead, let's do the hat, okay. So this is the hat that I have, what I showed you, okay. This is one of my best of the best hats, the 110. A uh, good thing about 110s is they're adjustable, so you really don't have to worry much about sizing, okay? Uh, my favorite hat, the 6277 FlexFit, it has two sizes, medium and um, small medium and large XL. So you got to stock up on those sizes, all right? But this one here, all right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to make, okay, let's talk about puff real quick, all right? Puff, okay, you got your cheap. Uh, wall, wall, uh, Walmart type crafting. Okay, those are good if it's the if you need to get something knocked out that same day. And worst case scenario, go to Walmart. Yeah, it can be done, but you want to buy real good one. This is the Ganold. Okay, Ganold. This is the bodybuilder or the I forgot what it's called on Ganold. Okay, but it's like the heavy, dense. Okay, the very heavy dense. Okay, just keeps everything nice and tight. All right, so if 3D Puff is something you want to get into, I would suggest buying the best of the best foam. 
Okay, it's not it's not expensive. Don't think just because it's the best, it's gonna be super expensive. It's still kind of like the same price as a lot of other stuff. All right, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's hoop this up. Okay, move this camera a tad bit. All right, of course. I got the all famous Gen Two right here. Okay, if hats is something you want to get into. You definitely need to have the Gen 2. Just makes life a whole lot easier. Okay. And you got your tearaway. I got the already pre-made, pre-cut tearaway. All right, hold on. Let me angle this. It's like a fit right here. All right, I think I'm good right there. All right. And then unbiased. I'll put that link unbiased. All right. Link for the phone. Okay. Ganold. Either Ganold or um, what's it called? Um, Ganold, you need to have an account. If you don't have an account with them, then you could use um, Allstitch. I use Allstitch also. All right. Go ahead and I think we got a good view. Yeah, so you could just fold, tear away. Okay. And then let me give a hint because I always get a question about tear away on this. I put tear away on every hat that I use. All right. It don't matter what hat it is. I use at least if it has this buckram. So anytime you see this buckram, this is what's called structure. Okay, because there are structure to the hat. Okay, it has some push into it. Okay, so I will use one one layer of tearaway. If it's just a dad hat that does that's unstructured, then I would use two. Okay, so let's put this right here. Okay, this is one of the benefits. Gen two is just it holds. The stabilizer okay you don't have to do any crazy tricks to hold it okay and just open it up a tad bit put this put this sticker right below One ten. The two the two tens are cool too. I like the two tens, I like this. Okay. And the six two two sevens. Uh, I'm gonna do a review on all my favorite uh, flex fit. Okay. I like to buy all of them, all the flex fit, just to see which ones I like the best. And like what I was saying in the beginning of the show, a lot of that sampling, testing out garments and all that, is everything that I do right now. Right now that that uh, the business is slow compared to what's going to happen in November, okay? That's when you do a lot of your testing, okay? Because when, when, when business booms up, which, trust me, come November, October, November, all right, you really don't have time to be testing stuff. So always use the downtime, off season, to be testing. Get this a little center. I'm like at an at a weird angle right here, so push it this one. All right. All 
All right, good to go. Always check your backing that you're good. And then I like for foam, I like to push this down just so it could be nice and flat. Okay, best thing about Gen 2, three point of contact, right? This part right here, all right, it plays a huge role, these sides, because it holds, it holds that side portion. So, of course, you get your traditional bottom part here that holds it down here, but you get this side part here, okay? All right, let's take it to the machine. Just give me a second to move this camera real quick. Actually, I could just move this chair, this table. Slide it up. So I'm just gonna select cap. All right, it just does. Sets it up, it resets it to a cap. All right. Uh, let me double check uh, my bobbin. All right, nice fresh, nice fresh one right here. Oh, uh, one thing, okay, is uh, for the Gen 2, for those who have the Gen 2, I removed this wing, this right one, okay? Uh, some people remove both. For some reason, this is the only one that bumps if I get to that side. I really don't have too much. And I really don't do designs that get too close to the sides. Okay, so we're talking about like the seven inch designs. I really don't go too much like that. Okay. I like to keep my designs very basic, like right here. Okay, so the one that I do, you got to take off this one right here. Okay. Trace this. All right, let me just change the angle. Give you a better view right here. Just legs. All right. So center this, all right. Then of course we always trace. We go way lower than this. And then in order to go low on your hat, you gotta change the parameters, all right? The Y axis has to be at, uh, I think we put it at 80. I think uh, factory default has it like at a 60, something very, very high. All right, and then um, after you trace, okay. Cause sometimes it shows that you're gonna hit this part here, but if you do a silhouette, 
Okay, you'll get the actual. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, so ready to go. Okay, uh, let me see if we got any questions before we start. Uh, all right, I'm trying to see um, this question. Would you show how to set it up for the starter people, please? All right, let me know exactly what what to start up. Because I, I just I just start I just uh, showed the whole process right now. But if there's something that I missed, let me know. Okay, got that thread. All right, let's start with this placement stitch. This is just to let us know where to place our stitch. Okay, so I haven't put foam net because it's gonna tell me. Hold on, I thought something had caught, got caught right there. All right. That's my placement stitch right there. Then I have my foam here. So I already have an idea of how wide it should be. Okay, what I like to do, okay, for the most part, put it right under here. Okay, but you'll know, use the old fashioned tape. And then, like I said earlier, my wife, she does a lot of the production, right? She just, she can just kind of place the foam in place without really putting tape and all that stuff. But I still put tape. All right, here, so it's just gonna do this first running stitch or walking stitch. I just slow it down a bit. Just gonna kinda hold this part. I shift it, okay. All right. All right, I think we got a good angle here. Charles. Sure. And really right now, I got tape on it right now, but as long as it's already good right there, it's pretty much good. So. All right. And then barb, yep, exactly. Not all forms, not all foams are alike. Make sure you purchase, all right, from Puff Embroidery. All right. Um, all 
and then TMG. Uh, for the flat stitch out, which twill and stabilizer did you use? So that sample that I did, okay, the sample that I showed, uh, that was that was in twill. That was um, a polo shirt. That was done on a polo shirt, on a um, Port Authority type polo shirt. But you could sample it out on anything. But if I do use um, twill, I just use the twill from Twill USA. Right, so now it's doing the circle part of the R. Okay. Then Marisa, yeah, got the Gen 2. All right. Change your life. I know it changed our life when we went to a Gen 2. All right. Uh, Gen 2 is pretty pricey, I would say. Um, if hats, right? If you want to get into hats, that was like my main thing. When I started embroidery, I, I got into embroidery for hats. Okay. And now we do hats and polo shirts. And of course, beanies. Then Banu, I tried several types of foam and each time the result was not clean after I peel it off. I was not able to remove all the residue from the foam. All right. I would say do not give up. Whatever you do, do not give up. Everything is a learning experience. Okay, let me zoom out a bit right here. Everything is a learning experience, okay? Anytime you uh, something doesn't come out right, because trust me, not everything has ever came out right with us it's just it just means you got to make adjustments anytime something doesn't come out right i think my first hat project it took us uh 22 samples before we got it right okay so if we would have gave up on the first second third fourth fifth right it took us all the way about 22 tries But the thing is, once you got it, that's it. You got it. Okay. You got it. And then I'm biased. Yup. Don't give up. Keep trying. All right. That's the main thing. Do not give up. That's the one thing about embroidery is that. Um, that's why no, not everybody does embroidery because it's hard. Right. But you will soon notice that once you got it, you're going to tell yourself like, well, it wasn't that bad. Doing that long corner right now, that long turn. That's going to run all the way up. Yep, and this is exactly what it is, all right? If you find a good digitizer, all right, because sometimes you're blaming yourself, okay? You're blaming yourself thinking that you're doing something wrong, but it might be your design, okay? It might be you're doing everything correct, but there's something like a minor detail that's messed up on your design that's throwing everything off, okay? So, of course, you do got to get a good digitizer that, that, that has experience and that is known for 3D Puff. Mm -hmm. 
Banu from Dubai. You live in Dubai? All right. I was in Dubai in uh, 2014, 2015. I can't remember if I saw a um, an embroidery shop. I know they had a lot of good stores over there. Yep. I was over at the souk, at the Burj Khalifa, all that. Yep. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in Dubai. All right. Dubai most likely has foam. I know there's a lot of talented uh, embroiders over there in Dubai too. So you should be able to find foam in Dubai. All right. Um, Hey, good morning, George. What type of scissors you got over there? All right, when I when I put it back on the table, when I put the hat back on the table, I'll show you my box of scissors because I have a lot of scissors. All right, now it's doing that final turn. Okay, it's going to bring it all the way up. And it's gonna cover that intersect that that intersection on top. Since this this is I like this R because there's a lot of moving pieces. If you look at it, right? There's a lot of pieces coming from the left to the right. Then we got this final piece coming from the top. Okay. Um, I always like to use the letter R as an example because you got all these moving pieces. But here, it's going to cross this three-way intersection, okay, from the looks up here, looking good so far, all right, so it's going to cross this first one, and this, this machine, this uh, embroider machine is, we use it just for hats. So all of the needles are all sharp points. So you want to make sure you're using sharp points. Uh, we have 80, 80 slash 12 titanium needles. Pretty sure this one's titanium. Yeah. All right. So that's just the little small details for your hats is what's going to make your project a whole lot easy. All right, from the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be like an easy cleanup. All right, easy, easy cleanup. Uh, foam plays a big role. So we have this uh, super dense foam that's keeping everything nice and clean. And really, the as long as you take the time in the digitizing process, you should have minimum cleaning necessary, okay? Usually you have to, all right, it's a wrap. All right, so let me just adjust these lights to bring it. All right. And then while I'm taking this out, just a reminder that I do have earlier this year on the embroidery class. I do have um, I do have that uh, that session where I talked about the ten rules of three D puff. So a lot of those ten rules we used here. Okay, we used here. So you can always go back and reference that video right there. All right, hold on. Give me one sec. All right, we got a good view. And then this, this is my box of scissors right here. So just real quick, and the ginger. So I have that video on my listing of the scissors that we that we use here. Okay, uh, we're applique, the cloth, these. All right, these, probably my favorite ones, these spring. Okay, 
just when I'm under the machine. Okay, these are just quick. These for those hard to reach ones. Okay, just, okay. this one here. Okay, my best friend right now, which I'm going to use right now. Okay, I keep it very basic when I clean my uh, when I clean my phone. All right, but let's remove the hoop. All right, I think the best part of puff embroidery, okay, I think the best part is taking off the foam. And I kind of like made it right exactly the perfect spot right here. Okay. Hold on. Let me see something. Let me just get the, this part here. stuff all right so so far with zero cleaning right now okay zero clean let me see if i can get a good view all right so if you see any foam i see a little teeny one okay i just use this one here okay Keep it very basic. All right, just push anything. And what locks everything in is the heat gun, all right? So you know it's good to go when you need minimum, minimum work right here. A right. little loose thread that I'm going to take care of right here. Okay. But for the most part, okay, what you want to look for, these intersecting lines, right? Our area of, of, our area of concern right here. So everything came in exactly the angle of my thread. Okay. They came in clean right here. Came in clean right there. Okay. Right here. Right here. all your angles looking nice and clean okay let me see I'm trying to get you a good view let me adjust this light all right so this r looks very very elegant that long tail okay and then right now i just need to connect my um then pull out of course we always check our tension all right let me see all right tension always looking good and really uh we don't run too many eye tests on our um on our machine because every time we do a project we just look right behind it and then if everything's good to go then you know your tensions are all good all right let me just um, let me hit this with the heat gun real quick. I got the heat gun on this side of the room, so let me just just knock that out real quick. Okay, and um, really, what makes the big difference, what makes life so much easy, is the foam matches the thread. Okay. So it makes cleaning even more easier, okay? Sometimes you're not in a situation where you have foam that matches, okay? It's not the end of the world. It just means you might have to do, it might take you like an extra three minutes or five minutes for cleanup, okay? You're just gonna have to push a little bit more thread in. 
Alright, I'm just hitting it with the heat gun, nothing too crazy. But that just seals the deal right there. Alright. Let's see how it's looking. Let me just hit it real quick. Alright, I like the contrast with this black and the red. All right, really stands out a lot. Okay, and really, really, usually when I'm doing 3D puff, you're not doing any type of crazy stuff like this, all right? So we have a lot of swirls happening and all that. A lot of times, you're getting nice, clean, basic logos, okay? When we're talking about just straight, um, straight block letters or stuff like that, okay? Makes life so much easy, okay? So, all right, let me take care of some last minute questions. I think it was a very good, a good stitch out. Good training. All right, let's take care. Get some lights right here. All right. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Then uh, Express Prints. What type of hat hoop are you using? My looks. Yeah, this is the Gen Two. Okay, G E N Two. Makes life a whole lot different. And then, um, then Bevy Jean, right? Uh, yeah, so Justin has a 3D puff tool, okay? Right, so that's a more advanced type stuff if you want to clean up your uh, hat embroidery, okay? And then, all right, thank you, Jesse. Looks good, yeah. And then, uh, Barb. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I said the font. The font is called Corner Store JF. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, Adobe font. So you'll find it on the Adobe website. Adobe font website. They have a lot of good website. Uh, I got the Adobe plan that has a Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, Lightroom, uh, Premiere, so it also comes with a bunch of fonts. What I want to do, I want to go ahead. Uh, I think I'm gonna have Monday, uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday. I'm gonna. I want to. I want to stitch. I want to digitize the whole uh, from A through Z. So I might do that. Put it out next week. All right. Mashi, good morning. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Marisa. Yeah, I think it I think it looked real good. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bias. So hands. Bam bam. All right. All right. So um today, right? I'm very fortunate to have I'm on a four day weekend right now. So I'm about to uh turn the studio, right? Turn the shop slash studio. We're gonna knock out about four videos. Okay, so my goal. I do go to work tomorrow. I got duty tomorrow, right? It's all good, all right? But I'm going to knock out four videos. So be on the lookout for this week, all right? I got some very good, good ideas that I'm excited, all right? I don't know. I get excited with good topics, all right? Um, if if you have any topics you want to talk about, if you think there's like a, something that's on your mind, like, hey, why, does, why do we do this? Or um, how about we do a project like that? You can always, you can always, um, Give me any recommendations, okay? A lot of times I do, I do do videos based on recommendations, okay? I know 3D Puff is always a highly recommended topic, um, but if you have anything you wanna, you kind of wanna explore, okay? Anytime I do a video, I like to go into details. I like to do, um, I like to base the information that I know, and then I'll kind of go out and kind of see um, other ways of doing stuff. Okay, and try to, I always ask why, why do we do it like this? Why do you do it like that? 
okay? There's a, there should always be a why on everything that we do, okay? And that deals with settings, materials, cost, okay? Equipment, every time you should have a why we're doing something the way we do it. All right. All right. Hey, good morning, Levite. Long time focusing on screen printing. All right. Now trying to get back into embroidery. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, and then Barb. Yep. Have a good weekend. All right. Uh, that's one thing. All right. It's a long weekend. I uh, hope everybody spends some good time. Okay. Of course, we're always taking care of business, but of course, we're always uh, spending time with family. So get some good family time this weekend. All right. Uh, I do appreciate everybody stopping by today. Okay. I think we had a real, real good discussion, real good, good training. Okay. We digitized and we hooped and we stitched out. All right. The three, three embroidery triangles, right? The three embroidery triangles without one, you cannot have the other. All right. So when you're training, when you're learning this topic, all right, don't just learn the digitizing. Don't just learn the, the hooping and don't just learn the stitch out. You got to do everything all in one. Okay. And then, of course, comes the business side. Right. All right. So, see y'all. Okay. A lot of videos coming out this weekend or this week. Okay. So, be on the lookout for that. All right. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you're on the replay, leave all your questions down in the comments below. And that is the best way for me to. Uh, answer any of your questions and that way we can all learn from your questions. All right. I want to thank everybody in the chat today. You make the show 10 times, 100 times better because your questions, right? Your questions helps other people, not only people that are on the live, but people that are on the replay. Okay. A lot of times I forget little small details and you kind of remind me of things that I'm missing. All right. All right. So I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out, everybody.